Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, sir, please. Good afternoon, sir. Take your seat, Rajat. Thank you, sir. Please introduce yourself to the board. Sir, my name is Rajat Sharma. Mm -hmm. I did my graduation from NIT Kurukshetra in Electronics and Communication Engineering. After that, I joined Airtel and uh, I served there for six months. And thereafter, I joined Bharat Electronics Limited. And I served there for around two and a half years. And I resigned from there last year. OK. You keep, you said that you keep updated about the contemporary geopolitical events. So, yeah, what yes. is the latest news about the international affairs and the newspapers? Or what, what have you read about them? Name any two international affairs news. So the Red Sea crisis, it has been raging for more than a month. And so apart from that, uh, China-Taiwan uh, standoff, it has uh, uh, potential of escalation. Is there anything new about China-Taiwan? Sir, uh, when was the last news item published about China and Taiwan in our Indian newspapers? Sir, recently there was an election in Taiwan and in which... Uh, that was almost three months, uh, three months ago. ago. One month ago, two months ago. Sir, apart from that, China and Taiwan, their ships keep on coming near each other and there are news of skirmishes. Wait, news, I have two important news items. The current news, anything. Red Sea is also becoming old, it is becoming routine. China, Taiwan is of course old. It is Sir, decades old. What is the new thing, recent, anything, you know, which is of importance to India also? Sir, in Maldives, Chinese research vessel, it was stoked for more That's than... That's also two weeks old. Sir, the Israel-Gaza uh, conflict, uh, there they are near to a ceasefire. They are near to a brief pause, but uh, the final conditions on which they'll agree, it's uh, taking time. Okay. Okay, you you know, you read these geopolitical events, but you have service choice, you have not you know, given foreign services your first choice, what is the, I would say that because of interest, you would be most likely, you know, opting for the foreign service instead of the Indian administrative service. So first is Indian administrative service gives oh, me, yeah. gives me a chance to uh, contribute directly to India's growth journey mm -hmm. and sir the Indian Foreign Service is an extension of that that uh, the stronger our country is the more uh, strongly we can uh, raise our voice and uh, diplomatically we can uh, uh, gain on the international stage okay okay name any you know of the four of the latest innovations in computing and electronics of 2024 because you wrote a paper on that. What is the latest on that? Sir, one is that uh, quantum communication. It's uh, the materials with which quantum communication can take place. Uh, there have been researches going on in that area, and some materials uh, show promise, but uh, they need to be further verified with the... Where, which material is being used for quantum communication? What exactly is quantum communication? Can you describe it to, uh, to me as an electronics and communication engineer? Sir, quantum communication gives us an opportunity to uh, exploit more than one states as, for example, in classical communication, we have two states, zero or one. Sir, if in classical uh, physics, we suffer from this limitation that uh, we can only gain uh, any states of two raised to power something. Sir, but this limitation can be uh, bypassed, um, can be surpassed by using quantum communication in which a particle, in which uh, an atom can be in more than uh, one state at the same time because the number of uh, states in which, we, in which it can go by excitation, it's not binary, that if it's in zero, then it what will... What is that principle called in which the atom can be, you know, in different stages, stages at the same time? What is it called? So there are uh, two principles. One is the quantum superposition, and one is entanglement. That if one particle is here and it's around thousand kilometers away, then if well, ent quantum entanglement is totally different from, you know, being in a uh, a particle being in different states. There's an element of uncertainty to it. To it. What is it called? 
the principle. There's one single principle which sir, was... Sir, I believe you are referring to the Heisenberg sensor Trinity principle. Trinity principle. That is what you are talking about, different states of a particle. Yes. So, sir. in quantum entanglement, um, being a communication engineer, if you know, uh, entanglement can take place millions of light years away also. If the particle is of the, if the particles are identical, now the physicists are saying that, you know, non-identical particles can also be entangled. Is that true? Yeah. Sir, non-identical particles. Uh, I'm not aware of the exact research which which says uh, that behind this. But sir, yes, if we can. Uh, create exact situations for those particles and the state of those particles become all conditions become exactly same then in a way they can become but sir it will require a lot more research than uh, require then it is required for uh, identical particles to be entangled what is the ranking of Haryana in agriculture so agricultural productivity yes sir in wheat it's uh, the overall overall ranking number 2 number 3 number 4 or no number Sir, I'm aware of the paddy and uh, wheat rankings overall. Okay. In agri uh, income tax on agriculture. Hmm? One argument in favor, one against. Sir, first I'll uh, say against. Sir, because agriculture for 86% of the farmers, it's a mainstay for their livelihood. So, sir, if we... You're telling about uh, Haryana or overall the country? Sir, overall. Sir, because uh, overall... Uh, how much uh, dependent on agriculture? Sir, 86% family, 86% of the farmers uh, are marginal. That is, they are having less than 2 hectares of land holdings, sir. So, they are producing for their own survival. But otherwise, also, they will not come in that bracket? Sir, sir in that case, uh, uh, against uh, income tax, one, one thing is that to promote innovation, sir, because agriculture even now, uh, is the mechanization which has come into agriculture is mostly limited to tractors and uh, basic equipments. But if we want to promote innovation, then for some time we should uh, let it remain taxless. For, how many, for some time, how many years? 75 is already over. Sir, but uh, I believe that... Uh, okay, okay, in favor. Sir, in favor because uh, the farmers will come in this uh, tax bracket. Sir, they are... Uh, Already, already well off, so they might be taxed to. Uh... Okay, <clears throat> okay. There was big advertisement yesterday. Punjab proud of achievement that 90% of the households are having zero electricity bill. It's a big achievement. Sir, this uh, gives us uh, something to ponder on that uh, electricity bills should not be seen as a welfare state because those co consumers who can uh, pay their bills, they should absolutely be uh, asked to pay their bills. Okay, okay. Australia recently enacted a law that bosses will not call or send email to their employees after office hours. Do you think such type of law is required in our country also? If not, why? So, why? Sir, so, first of all, I'll start by the de uh, developing status of the two nations comparison. Tell me specific, not developing status. Sir, Do we need such type of law? Sir, we are a developing nation, so our productivity needs to be high. So we can be disturbed in the dead of the night also? So the dead of the night is an extreme case, but uh, after office hours, uh, we are... So there is no personal life to the employees? Sir, so personal life is required, but productivity uh, is also needed to in our country because we need to grow at around 8%. Why those bosses don't call in the office hours? Sir, so, sir, in our case, we are producing uh, services for... Okay, tell me two schemes which have been inherited by this government from the previous government and very important. The first is the MG and hmm. second one. Sir, the NFSA and free food grains. You are interested in geopolitical events. Tell me which are the conflicts which we are facing right now, international is most difficult to resolve and why? 
सर दी कॉन्फ्लिक्ट और आई शुड से चैलेंज फर्स्ट इज सर इसराइल गाजा कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सर बिकॉज द जेनेसिस ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट लाइज इन टू स्टेट सोल्यूशन दैन यू एन गिवन टू स्टेट सोल्यूशन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन बट सर द ग्राउंड रियलिटी इज सच दैट देर आर अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सेटलमेंट्स इन वेस्ट बैंक एंड सर गाजा इट सेल्फ इज वेरी स्मॉल सो द रिजोल्यूशन टू दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विल रिक्वायर मल्टीपल स्टेक होल्डर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ईरान इज ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन दिस बिकॉज इट्स बिलीव दैट हमास वॉज फंडेड इनडायरेक्टली बाई ईरान and sir this uh, red sea conflict is also entangled with that so so its resolution seems uh, quite dif difficult in the nearest term so apart from that uh, this uh, sir with respect to india or should i tell you tell you what you want sir this uh, uh, china and usa uh, superpower game sir so it's uh, taking a toll on uh, smaller and developing countries also because they are being asked to uh, take sides uh, and uh, if uh, small countries for example they take uh, uh, assistance from china then there is a pressure on the other side that they should uh, scrap those uh, uh, projects okay see presenting the different conflicts if i say un has failed in its purpose for which it was formed do you agree so first of all i believe failed would be a strong word but uh, un uh, certainly in the recent times uh, has not lived up to its expectations so uh, because the uh, recent conflicts as we have seen un was uh, uh, un seemed like a uh, toothless tiger because the united nations security council which is responsible for ensuring security in overall uh, globally Uh, there's uh, uh, fundamental ideological differences one, on one side there's china and russia and the other side there's uh, western powers so sir no significant resolution came, uh, comes out of uh, unsc and sir it has led to no significant action being taken by the un in case of conflicts see this now government is talking of implementing caa last time they when they passed the bill there were a lot of opposition so why there was so much opposition for implementing the ca bill and what is the guarantee that this that this time the there will be no opposition to that so i'd start by saying that these uh, just the implementation of rules is pending which uh, is supposed to be is supposed to take place in the uh, near weeks sir the basic opposition to the ca bill was that it's exclusionary in nature that only non muslims were given uh, relaxation in terms of citizenship conditions uh, but sir considering the nature of our neighbors which uh, which was said that uh, persecution facing communities were being given uh, citizenship and they were only fast tracked others would be would be given see that in that case the opposition should have come from the other countries and but instead opposition has come from within the country who was already citizens of the country so why is opposition within the country why there was protest within the country <coughs> sir uh, there was a fear among some people that those who had already come as uh, illegal migrants uh, some time back from uh, bangladesh uh, for example they might be uh, they might not be at, uh, taken at a par with those uh, uh, other communities which were said to be given fast track citizenship illegal migrants are illegal migrants should they be allowed to stay sir on humanitarian grounds it becomes our responsibility to give them uh, shelter but sir in longer term it's it puts a burden on our country's resources which are already stretched due to our large population see if i say there is a, a growing trend of right wing so what we call right wing nationalism world over do you agree if yes then why this trend has taken is going increasing in recent times sir i'd start by taking south america sir in south america the reasons are economic ruins many many economies are seeing hyperinflation and there's economic Uh, recession type conditions sir in europe the cause is different because their uh, migration the illegal migration has led to quite uh, uh, marching of the local populations against uh, the migrants taking their resources okay thank you
what is the difference between jogging and walking? Give me a technical difference. So, first is this uh, angle of uh, bending one, of knee. There is one basic difference. You just tell me that one. Sir, the knee is not bent while walking and while no, jogging it gets bent. Sir, the speed no, is more. Not sir. You don't know. Sir, I'm not able to go See, into the setting. Know. Yes, sir. Walking, one foot has to be on the ground, touching the ground all the time. Yes, sir. The float phase is absent in walking. Absolutely. Okay, uh, three <coughs> geopolitical events today, which will be, which might be considered as history making 50 years down the line. Sir, the outcome of Russia Ukraine war, it will have a ripple effect on uh, countries, for, uh, most importantly China, because it. Russia Ukraine war is fine. But what can it snowball into? Sir, if Russia loses, then it's a big... It's in today's newspaper. It might be the beginning of Third World War. This is one. Second? Sir, China-Taiwan conflict. If China takes over Taiwan, then first island chain would be... Sir, third is the... in South America. And the resources like uh, lithium, the lithium triangle countries, China is having large foothold, but if it lithium gets... Lithium is losing its value now. Anyway, I'll move on to another question. Social media, ka, what, what influence should social media have in framing of foreign policy? Sir, uh, I'd like to start by saying that data which is uh, uh, generated by the users, it should uh, have some regulations as well as uh, its uh, storage should be held locally because data itself is the new value. said about foreign policy, impact of social media or role of social media in foreign policy. Okay, sir. Sir, social media uh, today, because uh, many leaders itself, their tweets on social media are seen as uh, their actual official statements. So, sir, one statement here and there, and it can uh, snowball into a controversy as was seen in Maldives context. And, sir, also seen in uh, Donald Trump's tenure that uh, he tweeted uh, something in okay. his... Right. Uh, how will you use scientific temper in administration? Sir, scientific temper... Uh, I'd like to start by saying that scientific temper would be questioning everything that's not uh, uh, that's not having concrete evidence. So, sir, that uh, related skepticism would lead us to uh, m make better policies because uh, any prevailing practice which is not against the uh, welfare of citizens might have to be looked in going current countries. And you're not giving me exact answer. Um, suppose you find your subordinate as a district magistrate that your subordinate is taking bribe. How will you handle it? Sir, taking bribe if there's a first I'll uh, make an inquiry into the substantiation of those allegations. And sir, if it's found true, then uh, as per Prevention of Corruption Act, uh, uh, Further action should be taken by uh, uh, pu by putting that file to the higher ups of the charges of corruption. But this can have many repercussions. Maybe that employee has a very large following in the uh, in the public or in something because he gets work done. He takes money and gets work done. But sir, as civil servants, we also have a res responsibility to maintain accountability okay. of. Um, EAM is supposed to have said recently that foreign policy is leaving Delhi and is being taken to other cities in India. Do you agree with this? Sir, he was referring to the extent to which G20 was uh, quite...
taken to Sir, apart from that, people also are taking huge interest in foreign policy and they are having their views on different issues. You work with yes, sir. So, how is, what steps are taken up the PEL to improve performance? Sir, first I would start by saying that uh, the recruitment process it has been aligned with the corporate sector and I also was recruited from the uh, my campus. So this is one of them, sir. It gives agility to the organization. Sir, second is that all PSUs, government has categorized them into Maharatn and Navratn. And uh, sir, they are given independence and their board of directors is given independence to take decisions up to, of investment up to around rupees 1,000 crores. So sir, it, it, give, it gives them some uh, element of uh, independence in taking risks up to a certain level which are necessary for any organization to grow because the taking risks will promote innovation. And sir, apart from that, uh, BEL has started exporting its products, which is in line with India's uh, uh, overall policy of increasing our defense exports. And also, sir, it gives us uh, foreign exchange and our products get a wider market in outside countries. So with respect to the uh, autonomy, so, what suppose if they fail in a particular hospital? If the classes, what are the possible things of the mechanisms? Sir, first of all, a project which is new, it's uh, having an equal probability of uh, failure and a success. So, we will have to um, uh, inculcate this uh, like mindset that a project can fail. And accountability should be in terms of that no fund should be misutilized. But if there have been significant steps and efforts to make this that project a success, then they should take learnings from that project and reinvigorate them to uh, start with a new endeavor. Because the private sector also, they fail many times. Google, for example. And they fail, they lose their own money. Who's money? So it's investors' money, like PSUs also are in market on, in, and uh, listed on the stock exchanges. So, but ultimately, uh, all projects will not fail if the efforts of employees are sincere. Some projects might fail, but the success rate itself will show that that one or two project will have a ripple effect on innovation as well as the market of a company will increase. So, fundamentally, there is a change in approach. Government of course, yes. I believe Do so, sir. Sir, government, in keeping with its principle of maximum governance and minimum government, it wants to get out of those sectors which are not strategic. So, government wants to maintain its minimum presence in strategic sectors. So, is it <coughs> Sir, the pace of disinvestment and privatization is slow because it's very complex to uh, select which PSUs to be sold first. And the private sector also should have this appetite of investing that, large, that much large money to buy those companies. So, it's a bit slow, sir, but it can be expected in that scale. So, so uh, coming to the upcoming elections. So the nature of elections is getting closer to the presidential elections. What is it? What is the context to this statement? Sir, uh, these times the elections uh, get uh, a type of presidential because people uh, have started uh, having faith in a person rather than a party because they believe that the promises of a person can be better believed. And sir, apart from that, uh, this also happens when there's a majority with a party and one leader uh, is able to get that majority on his face value. Sir, that may have led to our elections indirectly become, becoming presidential type of elections. So what's the face value of the MLA's or MLA's at the top? Sir, so this seems to be the limitation if this if our elections get this type because MLAs and MPs are uh, their face value is uh, uh, be become secondary and the leader of their party they vote on his behalf or her behalf and uh, sir 
and those MLAs or MPs take a back seat. It's a limitation. So it impact the executive and the legislative relations for Sir, it will impact the voting behavior of MLAs or, on, and MPs on significant resolutions in the legislatures. Sir, because uh, they'll uh, uh, see that every significant re resolution they'll vote on party lines and uh, what the, their leader has said. Sir, then meaningful uh, debate on some uh, issues might uh, get reduced. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Sir. All the best. Thank you. All sir. the best. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, sir.